Good morning, Mavericks. It's Dean here. I wanted to talk today about targeting. So when you're creating content, you're growing your network, you're reaching out to people, targeting really matters. Now, I'm sure everybody will agree with me here, but I want to go one step further in targeting and talk about the most valuable client. Now, within your market, let's say you're targeting IT companies and they've got 200 employees and you're targeting the CEO. That is great. But out of that gazillion companies who fit that criteria, who are the people where the biggest opportunity exists? What are the circumstances and situations around that business that could really make them the most valuable client for you, where you can add the most value, but importantly, they will see and perceive your value better than others. Now, when we think about it, when we see it and we go on it and we grow our network, of course, on LinkedIn, we can look at just the broad targeting. But one of the things that really makes an impact and will make your life easier from a social selling point of view is if you can understand and appreciate the specific challenges that they may face. The more specific you can get with the challenges and problems that you solve, the more cut through you get with your content and your messaging. So if you go, I help IT companies implement social selling, that's great. But actually, if you start to nail down some of the key problems, you'll actually punch through the content barrier and the, all the noise more easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some things I do on LinkedIn that can potentially help you. And I'm going to put these up on screen so you can see them. And away we go. So here we go on Sales Navigator. So you will have been on Sales Navigator, no doubt. Let me move over so I can make this a bit bigger for you you will no doubt have been on Sales Navigator. Now, when I'm looking at Sales Navigator, of course, I can target IT companies, 200 to 500, and all of this stuff, right? But let's let's just be honest for a minute, right? Look how many different types of IT companies there are. IT services and IT consulting. Are all of these companies actually relevant to me? So the first thing is about targeting. We want to grow our network with the right people. We want to know that the people that we're adding to our connections are people where there is a need and there is a fit. The more work we do to get the need and fit right, the easier it will be from a content, from an outreach, and from a personal brand piece. Because now we're actually talking to people exactly the right people. If you've built your network, for an example, and there is a hodgepodge of people in there, you know, you serve IT, but you've got colleagues from when you worked in uh, government or you work, you serve marketing, but you've actually got people in technology sectors. You will have a hard time punching through with your content. So connections should be relevant. So if you don't have a relevant connection base, LinkedIn should could show your content to some of your network as a kind of sample test, which is what the algorithm does. And because they have zero interest in IT or marketing, they browse on past it. So you're thinking, I've made a brilliant post exactly for my target audience. I'm getting zero engagement, zero visibility. Ask yourself, how many irrelevant connections do you have in your network? Because if you've got too many, it can actually harm your content reach because LinkedIn will show the content to the people, a sample of your network, and it could show it to the people who have zero interest in what you do. So building your network with exactly the right people matters. But then when we come to who can we add the most value to, the most valuable clients, this is where we really need to dig a bit deeper. What needs to be going on in their business for them to need you? Now, we might not be able to search for all of those criteria, but are there any obvious things? Uh, is there a retention issue of staff? Do they have a low retention issue? Is there a growth issue? Are they contracting or growing? What are the circumstances that that company needs to be faced with 
for you to add a ton of value into their world. Now, when I talk to clients about this on our accelerator program, they often say, oh, they're struggling to grow. And this is such a broad term and such a vague term, it could apply to anybody. What exactly is happening in their world? Maybe they're signing managed service contracts for their IT services, but the retention of those services beyond the minimum contract period is really low. That could be uh, your angle to attract the most valuable clients because you're solving a very clearly defined problem. So I could build my personal brand and I could go to market saying, if you're struggling to retain your managed service contracts, I can come into your company and see how we can retain them and what we need to do to improve service to retain more contracts. And then my content can speak to it. Here's what your business is going through if you're not retaining contracts. You're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. You can really speak into their world with clarity because you're speaking to a defined specific pain point or a defined specific goal that they want to achieve. A business that just wants to make more profit, it's just not good enough or clear enough or relevant enough to the actual market. So if you know you're serving IT companies, you know that you want them to grow. The other thing you could look at on Sales Navigator, just show you here, obviously not all of these companies are going to be relevant. But if I look at the companies where they're based in the United Kingdom, if I could spell United Kingdom, um, so in the United Kingdom, these IT companies, there's 260 of them that match that criteria, right? Now, I could, I could broaden this up a bit, but what I'd be doing is trying to look through these companies to find exactly the right ones. So there's 798 companies here. Now, for many people, they'd go, ooh, 790, I've got a very small market. That's a good thing. That can be a good thing. If you start growing with these right companies and you start literally going through and selecting them yeah you can actually grow deep into those companies so you're seen as the key person of influence or the um the subject matter expert in their worlds remember most of you watching me do not need thousands of clients you need a handful and so if you can really articulate one key thing, one key thing, you can massively influence them and get five, six, seven of those out of that 700 actually really seeing your value. But what we do is because we don't want to lose out, we don't want to risk anything, we broaden out. So we try and fix multiple problems. We try and offer multiple solutions. We try to do more, 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 more to appeal to as many people as possible. And in that process, we lose the potency of our targeted message. We lose the focus point for our content. And so what happens is our network gets a very generalized view of who we are. You know, I'll tell you a, a, an interesting story. I, for about five years, really resented being a LinkedIn person, really resented it. Uh, the reason being is my skill set is far bigger than LinkedIn. I've, you know, I, I've dealt with email marketing. I've dealt with Instagram and all these other different platforms, Facebook, the works. So I have a broad experience in sales and marketing beyond just LinkedIn. But what I realized is people know me for that, and that's a strength I need to exploit. So if, if, if you're sat here going, do you know what? We could grow here, 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 and you try and do it all at once. One, you'll overstretch yourself. But two, you'll never get your name known with a specific group of people for solving a specific problem. So... Whilst long term, very long term, it can be very advantageous to have a broad reputation for a particular topic, you know, marketing or sales or whatever. 
when you co when it comes to it, I knew I could make a bigger impact and better returns in the short to medium term from being really focused on what I do, social selling and LinkedIn and who I help. And we're zeroed in. But I had to come to terms with the fact that if I try and build my broader reach, broader reputation, I would struggle in the short to medium term to make an impact with anybody. So, number one, you want to find the companies in the right industries, of course, in the right locations, all of those things. But what are the circumstances growing in their business? Are they growing? Are they contracting? And in Sales Navigator, you can actually filter by some of these counts. Is there a department growing or contracting? Is there a company growing and contracting? Go look at their company profile. We look at the company's profile. And as we scroll through, we can look at their insights. Have they been growing consistently? They have. Is their average retention Right. So this company here, 328 employees, they've got a retention rate of 1.5. Could you look at some of these circumstances going on in their world that makes them the perfect fit for you and then connect into them and start creating content for those perfect fit clients? I know I'm a stuck record when I talk about this, but there are people you can serve and you do not need hundreds or thousands of companies and prospects to make a handful of client to win a handful of clients you need the right ones the more you focus the more successful the more clear and the more obvious your offer becomes the value becomes clearer the more you target now the broader you go the more difficult it is to get a clear message and whilst you can just go CEOs in IT, you can drill down further. How big's the company? What's the challenge that they might be facing? How can I adapt my message to be really focused? Do I offer one clear service and get those companies on board? Do I define myself really tightly to solve one very specific problem so I can punch through all of that noise through content and outreach and engagement and that will make a bigger impact in the short to medium term. Now, once you've built those relationships, once you've got those clients, you can expand your scope of services with them. I call this land and expand. It's common in the consulting world. The client signs up with you for one particular specific service. And as the relationship's built, you can you can add more services in. You can complement with additional services and you can grow that relationship. But if you try and appeal to everybody with multiple things and multiple services, you will not cut through the noise. So find the people who fit your criteria, but have particular set of circumstances going on in their business that you can speak to. It makes you look psychic. It makes it look like you know the inside workings of their business and you're talking and posting and, and adding value into the areas they're struggling with. And make those things practical. So imagine what their circumstances are like. What's the daily frustrations they might be feeling as a result of that problem? What's the dream outcome and what does that look like, feel like and smell like in their world? This is the key to targeting. Once you start to targeting, start at targeting, everything becomes clearer. Once you start to narrow down what I'm offering to who, and what the problem is that it solves and the outcome you deliver, you narrow those down, you start to punch through all that noise and you can build and grow lots of relationships on top of that narrowing down. So if you got value from this, I want you to do two things. First of all, come and tell me uh, on LinkedIn. Come and find me on LinkedIn. Drop me a message. And number two, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel so that you can get more videos from how to build your business with social selling.